Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Doyle. I'm a lecturer in social anthropology here in the department at UCL and I'm also the programme lead on the MSc in social and cultural anthropology. So in this brief talk I'm just going to go over today the main features of the MSc programme. So the structure of the programme, how it works uh, and the aims of the programme as well. So what it's all about, what you what you can get out of it and also what's unique about the programme at UCL compared to other similar uh, master's programmes in social anthropology, particularly here in the UK. And there should be plenty of space at the end for questions and answers. So the Social and Cultural Anthropology uh, MSc at UCL develops an understanding of anthropological theory, but also research skills. So this programme is aimed uh, at graduates in anthropology, but also related social science and humanities disciplines. So what we're looking for uh, are people who have got a background in essay-based social science and humanities disciplines. Uh, so this might be things like philosophy, uh, politics, politics and international relations, uh, sociology, and other cognate disciplines. And this is aimed as uh, potentially a conversion course. So if you're somebody that doesn't have a great deal of knowledge of social and cultural anthropology, but you come from a related social science and humanities discipline, and you're interested in, in learning a great deal about the history of anthropology, core anthropological theories, but also crucially on this master's programme, ethnographic research skills, then this is a, a good programme for you to consider taking. Now, the, uh, uh, the, the Social and Cultural Anthropology in MSc uh, at UCL also uh, it builds uh, skills and knowledge, not just for academic study. So you could take this master's degree, for example, if you were interested in doing further study for a PhD in anthropology, uh, but it also builds research skills which are relevant to careers outside of academia, for example, in international development and in doing market research, qualitative uh, or ethnographic market research, and also working in local and national governments and public service. So one of the things which uh, makes this master's programme different from some other master's programmes, other similar master's programmes, is the focus on developing independent research skills. So these skills are developed uh, not just through training, but crucially through you developing your own independent research project. So on this programme, we really encourage you to do your own ethnography, to do your own study, which might be over the... Uh, the the spring and the summer holidays uh, and we've had a number of different uh, studies carried over by students uh, carried out by students over the years for example we've had uh, students that studied museums in London we've had students that study a student that did a, a dissertation project where they studied a multicultural women's football team in southeast London we've even had students do overseas field work during uh, during their MSc uh, and so we encourage you to develop these independent research skills through carrying out your own project during the course of the MSc. Uh, but this is supported by specialized ethnographic, uh, ethnographic methods training, tuition, personalized tuition and supervision. So you have your own dissertation supervisor who can guide you through this, pro uh, through this process. Also, one of the things that marks out UCL is it is, I believe, the largest single anthropology department in the whole of the UK. And it also is also an interdisciplinary department. So the Department of Anthropology at UCL was founded by Daryl Ford, uh, who was somebody who trained in North American cultural anthropology and founded the department as a so-called four fields department. So unlike a lot of other social anthropology departments in the UK, um, this is a department where people also look at things like biological and evolutionary anthropology within the department, uh, medical anthropology, the study of material culture and so on. And so there are a very large range of options to choose from on your programme. Uh, and these are not just social anthropology options, you can choose outside of the social anthropology section. And this allows you to create your own bespoke, personalised degree programme. Uh, and also being such a large department and having this very interdisciplinary uh, multiple fields uh, environment, it's a very exciting environment and a very exciting academic community to feel part of. UCL is also a very international university and we are a very international 
department. So we have many international students that come from many parts of the world. We have a lot of students which come from, from East Asia, from China, but we also have students that come from the United States, from South America, uh, and even from Africa uh, and, uh, uh, and other parts of Asia. We also have a number of students that come from the United Kingdom. We also have scholars which are performing world leading research that come from many different parts of the world. Some people trained in the United Kingdom, some trained in the United States and other parts of the world in other academic systems. So just to go over how the program structure would work. So we have three terms uh, at UCL and we, uh, we, we provide you with three core modules for you to take. Uh, and these are critical issues, which is a, 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 essentially an introduction to the history of anthropology, the history of debates within social anthropology uh, and core uh, theoretical ideas and issues within the subject. And you also study a module called Methods in Ethnography. Uh, and I believe this will be with my colleague, Alison MacDonald. And this is a specialized training, uh, this is specialized training in ethnographic methods, how to carry out anthropological research through long-term ethnographic fieldwork. In addition to this, you choose three specialist option modules. One of these has to be from within the list available within the social anthropology section, but two can be from across the different sections within the department. And a very key part of this program is writing your own independent research project, which you write up in a dissertation to be submitted around about September. So we have this structure of the program. Uh, you have three modules in the first and second term, uh, which are which consist of a, a core introduction to anthropological theory, the history of anthropology, uh, and specialized ethnographic methods training, and your own uh, your own choice of option modules from across the department. Uh, and then you have time during the third term and the summer holidays to spend time on your own independent project to write up your dissertation. And this is guided through individual uh, tuition and personal dissertation supervising. So as I said, it's a very exciting uh, environment at UCL. We have in fact five different sections which co cover all of the different areas of anthropology. As a social anthropologist myself, I work within the social anthropology section but we also have people working on evolutionary and uh, environmental anthropology. So there are some people who are essentially evolutionary biologists that are studying things like the evolution of human anatomy, primates behavior, comparative primatology and so on. We also have people studying material culture. So we have people like Daniel Miller, who's an international expert on material culture. Um, so the way that uh, the material environment in which we live shapes our subjectivity, shapes uh, who we are as human beings, and also the study of digital anthropology, so the study of digital online worlds, things like social media and how digital technologies change the nature of human social life. We also have many people doing research in medical anthropology, so studying things like the cultural perceptions of illnesses, or for example how certain practices uh, which don't conform to standard western understandings of medicine can be understood as medical or psychiatric practices in their own right. And also public anthropology. So we have people, for example, who, who work at the intersection between anthropology and academia and the private sector and explore the ways that anthropology and anthropological knowledge can be used in creating creative and collaborative enterprises. And we also have a number of people in the department that work on documentary filmmaking. Uh, that, uh, that are, are leading documentary filmmakers and that carry out ethnographic and documentary uh, film. And so within this department, we have all of this research going on. And also we have all of these optional modules, which are across the range of uh, these different sections. So not just within social anthropology, but in things like material culture, digital anthropology and online worlds and so on. And so within this environment at UCL, we have a number of different section research seminars. These, these take place throughout the year. So the five different sections have their, their different research seminars. Uh, we have a social anthropology research seminar, which is a key part of the sort of community that we have here in the social anthropology section, where you can see cutting edge research being presented by 
leading figures in anthropology from the leading research intensive uh, research active uh, universities in the UK and also in, from other parts of the world. Uh, but also, if you were interested, you could go to other section seminars, for example, in medical anthropology or evolutionary and biological anthropology. And in addition to this, uh, UCL is a very large and active hub for anthropological research, has different reading and research groups, which you as postgraduate students uh, potentially here could become involved with. So we have things like, just to give one example, uh, of which there are many, the Human Ecology Research Group, which is a reading and research group where people talk about uh, the interactions between human societies and culture and the lived environment and explore solutions uh, for, uh, for, for dealing with things like climate change collaboratively with local communities. We also have reading and research groups on topics like uh, the anthropology of science fiction, for example. Uh, so it's a very large department and it is a hub for world leading research with many, many different research active scholars. UCL is based in its own building uh, in the Bloomsbury area of London. So you can see here, uh, this is the entrance to the building. Uh, it's mainly for offices uh, and for administrative functions, but we also have the Daryl Ford seminar room, which is our main seminar room where we have a lot of these uh, these, these research seminars, for example, the social anthropology section research seminar. Uh, and we also have things like a common room downstairs, and that's where we have things like social events and induction events for students. And it's also a space that students can use, for example, to study together or to, to kind of hang out um, uh, among uh, other fellow students, postgraduate students and undergraduate students. Uh, and so it's, as I said, it's an international environment with students from many, many different parts of the world. Uh, and also we have uh, experts from many different parts of the world. And just in the social anthropology section uh, where I work, where you, which you will get to know if you uh, uh, are on this master's program, we have people who are regional experts on China, Mongolia, Central Asia, Latin America, uh, 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 the, the Middle East, um, and also experts on things such as social movements, uh, the study of risk, the study of uh, the study of uh, of uh, of digital anthropology and online worlds, and the study of uh, financial systems and banking. Uh, so there are a lot of different uh, optional modules that you can take, and also a lot of different uh, uh, ranges of expertise that you can draw on it during your time on the master's program. Uh, so I think I've come in under time there a little bit, but um, I'll, I'll leave a space here for any questions that anybody might have.